Peter McKinnon had Two Minute Tuesday, I have Free Preset Friday! We're not wasting time, this is what you're gonna get. I have a new free preset for tracked text, but unlike some of my past tracked text presets, look at this, this actually scales and rotates, if you want it to, correctly in scene. And it gives you this really cool kind of 3D effect. It's more 2.5D. The text is still 2D, but it looks like it's properly moving in 3D space along with your footage. Now, four years ago, Peter McKinnon made his first tutorial for After Effects. And he does a lot of general work walking through the UI of After Effects, and there are lots of smaller tips and tricks. But the main effect he builds is this one. So you could start a subscription to After Effects and then watch a 24 minute video and then recreate that effect or uh, you could just drag and drop one free effect in DaVinci Resolve, which is also free. If you follow the link in the description, you will get to a download page for uh, this tracked text stretch effect. Just double click that DRFX file and it will launch Resolve and give you this little pop-up saying, do you want to install? Just click install. It might think for a bit, but then in your effects library, if you come down to Sterling Supply Company, uh, down here next to my other two free tracking uh, presets so far, uh, you have tracked text stretch. And I have this clip I used earlier, this really nice push in here. And I'm gonna drag uh, tracked text stretch right over that. And you can see, boom, it slaps big old text on our screen. So the two big places you need to connect are in the inspector, uh, over to the effects panel, you have all these custom controls. And then also underneath your viewer, you wanna bring this drop down and come to a fusion overlay. Importantly, that will give you these two tracking points. Where my previous track text preset only has one tracking point, this one has two, so you can get that scaling data and rotation along with position. Now this clip I want to use it on is pretty interesting because it is pushing in. So first, I'm just going to trim this to just before we actually uh, get these disappearing edges. We're not going to push past the text. So I'm just going to trim that clip. And then I'm going to uh, mouse over these two uh, tracking points and try to find uh, any point on this rock surface that just feels like it has a decent bit of contrast on both sides. Something that I will be able to track fairly well. You can pretty much ignore the way the text looks for now. And I am starting at the end of this specific clip because that is when I am closest to the surface I am tracking. So there's a lot of info. And then as uh, it tracks backwards and this scene gets smaller. It will take that image it saw larger and then track it as it gets smaller. And I found this is generally better instead of uh, pointing it at a bunch of pixels that are smaller with less detail and trying to figure out as it resolves more detail where it should accurately track. I like doing it this way, which is why I also added in this one a track back along with a track forward option. So I can click that track reverse button and sometimes it'll give you this black restricted window. If you do move your mouse over, you'll see those trackers being pushed back a little bit and it shouldn't be too long before it gives us a nice little pop up that boom, our track is done. I will click that. Hey, you will notice our text is massive. <laughs> it's massive and you can also see it's a little blurry on the edges. And what you need to know here has to do with this reference selection. Uh, the text, if you were to go into Fusion and Preview by itself, is almost filling the entire screen by itself. And that is being plugged into this tracker. And you see, if I go to the beginning of this clip, that is how big the text is normally. And if you were to scale in, yeah, the text looks pretty sharp. But the tracker is then scaling that up past uh, the actual resolution of the text. And even though, like, yes, the effect is working, uh, by the time you get in here, the text doesn't look that good. But with this reference option, I can change that from start to end. And now it is uh, sort of scaling up to full resolution. And then when it scales back, it, it will be like just as crispy. It'll look just as good. But now you see, hey, this, uh, I will toggle off this fusion overlay. And real quick by itself, hey, I am going to right click on that and come to render cache fusion effect filter, uh, select that option. So it will cache this effect as we play through. And yeah, if I play this, it's pushing in and that text is scaling along correctly to like fill that gap and look like it's it's sitting there in 3D space. I would probably come over to effects, open up my text controls, maybe change the center so it hangs a little bit more in the gap. But yeah, it just does its cool little effect. You do have these other text controls, of course, changing up the text, the color, the font, all that. And you also have motion blur um, if your subject ends up moving enough to need it. I do think this effect looks really good on this, these slow push-in shots. 
but this effect could also be useful in lots of different stuff. So absolutely uh, explore, try in different use cases, tracking different scenes. You could end up with some uh, pretty funky results, uh, but I think most of the time it'll look pretty great. And just like I showed off with the first uh, tracking text preset, if you click this little button up here, you will actually load the entire effect in the Fusion page. You can open up this effect, and there you have that standard text plus node. But if I open that, come to shading, then I can actually tag on any other shading layers to make this like as dynamic, as styled as I want. I'm on a little kick right now talking about all the things you don't need After Effects for. And this is one of them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.